Blog Talk Radio. <laughs> Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. John chatting with Nat, Natalie Jean. John, you know me, I'm Nat. So today we have a wonderful person as our guest, entrepreneur, the Natasha Richburg, an MBA and an MIS. Natasha Richburg has been married to Melvin for over 38 years. The couple has four grown children. Melvin is also extraordinarily supportive of every aspect of Natasha's professional accomplishments. After 31 years of federal government service as an information technology executive, Natasha moved to the next phase of her life to work full-time as the CEO of CNR Ministries, LLC. Natasha Productions, currently. Natasha is an author, IT consultant, life coach, talent manager, Security Plus Supervisory Committee member, Mile Marker 10 Business Advisor, and an information technology adjunct instructor at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, UMBC, in which she worked for over 25 years. Natasha Productions Talent Management produces music and concerts that reflect the heart and soul of this human experience. Music is what real feelings sound like. Information Technology Adjunct Instructor at University of Maryland, Baltimore County, UMBC. She is just an amazing, amazing person. And I got to meet Natasha at one of those music awards things. Let's welcome Natasha. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I love you. I love you. Because when we met, we had a good old time. Because I had you. Oh, my goodness. It was so much fun. You are fun, me. Ha, ha. Yeah, <laughs> you were funny. I had the best time of that. Could have been boring on what show, but it was funny with you. Sitting there, I was talking about everything and everybody because I was like, oh my <laughs> you know, you have to make things funny. You got to make things funny. Got to make things exciting. That's true. That's true. Another award show. Because everybody was- thinks going to shows and being part of that is is you know, but it can be daunting at times. Yes. If you're not around people with a good sense of humor, Ooh. it can wear on you. And you know I'm crazy. So I think that's yeah. why we're in a good way. way. <laughs> <laughs> I like I've always been like that, though. I like to make people laugh. I like to see people happy. I like to see people smile. I think it's important for somebody to smile and laugh at least once a day. Don't you? I do. I agree totally. Absolutely. That's why I try to watch funny movies, too, because I want to like it. So do I. So right. the thing that I do at night is before I go to bed, I actually watch. Well, I was watching the Golden Girls for the lo- longest time. I can I can do the entire script of every every season because I've watched this. So oh many my times. goodness, I love yeah. that show. Especially the cheese cake in the middle of the table when they got to yeah. talk about problems. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Oh my god, I'm so in love with that show. In fact, when I used to live in New York, um, I used to work for this law firm, and I was able to see. Uh, the woman that played Dorothy. Oh my God, where's my brain? Like, uh, oh yeah, but I, I don't know their real names, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I was able to see her perform. She had a one-woman Broadway show, and in oh. one day, oh my God, I did go see her and see her live before she passed away. So, you know, I know their names, but my brain is just foggy. Um, <laughs> I can't remember. I understand. Or, right now. <laughs> Right now, I'm watching Frasier. That's another one of my favorites. Um, oh, I watch- that is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like you. I like to watch things that make me happy, especially if I'm feeling sad or down. You know, I try to do right. Well, it lifts me. Now, since everybody's right. talking about this, you know, I'm going to bring this subject to you. I don't know. Did okay. you watch? Did you watch the Grammys? No. Okay, neither did I, but somebody messaged me on Facebook and was like, 
girl, did you watch the Grammys? Because everybody's talking about it. I was like, no, what happened? And, and then they started talking to me about um, Cardi B's and uh, Megan Thee Stallion's performance. And so people are, some people, a lot of people are in an uproar because um, the performance was uh, quite raunchy. And they feel like wow. they, they didn't see the video ahead of time. I mean, they didn't see the video. Um, what, what, they didn't yeah. hear the song. What were they expecting? Um. Okay. Now you you heard it from Natasha because she is a wise woman. Uh huh. So you know, I have some women that were bashing the both ladies, calling them names, and then there was one guy. Wow. Was, yeah, this was on a conversation on Facebook, and this one guy was like, "What are you, What are you guys doing?" You're calling these women names, they're empowered, they're doing their thing. And the guy said specifically, this is the genre in which they do this kind of stuff. This is their music. This is their art. Why are you trying to debase them and try and criticize them? Look, if you're quite, you need to criticize anybody. You need to criticize the Grammy because they knew what they were doing. It's all about money. They know what they're doing. Right. So I actually went and looked at the video, the performance on YouTube. Okay. And so let me give you my perspective. Okay. Now, I know what genre it is, and I know they're going to do their, their little wappy wap, and I know what the song is about, but there is like one one scene where <laughs> Cardi B's legs were like spread open, and you literally could see right in. So for me, um, I think they have the right to do whatever choreography they want. But that one scene, there were like, there was just, just a couple, couple scenes where they could have tweaked it. I mean, you could say this would have been okay for cable TV. But at the t- same time, I do agree with you is that they know who these artists are. What did people expect to see? Now, people are up in arms because their children were walking. Well, you can always turn the TV off. Or you can explain this is just artistry. So, and and then the other side of it is, you know, some people have this, stereotypical view about black women that they're all about sex and this that and the other that gives that other perception so what is your viewpoint on this whole dynamic oh i have a wonderful viewpoint i have it from my children's perspective and i started telling them about music when they were young i said the little kim they see right now she's going to grow up watch her evolution Call E.V. and make the sound. Watch their evolution. It's not about where they are. It's about right. their evolution. Mary J. Blige, tomboy, cute. Look at her evolution. Don't judge where she at, is at. Right. Watch her evolution. Queen right. Latifah, rapping about women. Then she's killing people as the equalizer. So it's not about right now. It's the evolution. It's perspective. The reason right. I didn't watch that, because that's not the genre I'm into. I'm into your genre, girl. Go ahead, <laughs> sing your song. I oh, I'm am. sorry, I'm still going to talk about her. But, but do you understand what I'm saying? And yeah. and for kids, yeah. they need to watch the evolution. The only thing I say about that song, I don't mm-hmm. have nothing negative to say about it. But if they had only did a PG version, so you can right. jam it with your kids, right. Right. Because that's a missed opportunity. I love the fact when Nelly was at his hottest, I could go to Walmart and get the PG version and play it. Mm-hmm. I could right. play Little John, the PG. So they miss an opportunity when they don't do a version so mamas can jam with their girls. That's true. I don't jam, I don't judge the genre. I don't judge the women. I teach my children who are grown now to watch their evolution. And so that's what they do. Right. No, I like that perspective. I remember Uh, Eve. Remember, remember Eve? Yeah. Watch their evolution. It's just, it's, it's, it's interesting to see how, Women bash other women. Like somebody brought up. But you the know fact- why? But do you know why? You know why? why? Let's talk about why. You brought me on here now, girl. We're going to talk about oh, why. Lord. Why do women bash? Bro? I'm interviewing you. Oh, my God. It's not my show. I'm sorry. I I'm know. Sorry. It. Do it. Do it. Do it. I lost myself. Oh, oh, oh. No, I'm it. I'm being interviewed. <laughs> Oh, my God. I forgot. Sorry, Natalie. I didn't mean to do that. You do you. Go ahead. Interview 
me, tell me. Tell me okay, why. so do you, do you, just tell me, just so, so I can tweak it. Why do you think women bash women? Um, I think insecurity. Bigger than that. Keep going. I think, I think they think they're in competition with other people, other women. It's bigger than that. Keep going. You you on the road, but keep going. Competition, lack of self love. Um, no village, baby. If no, women were in my space, they would be watching the evolution. There's mm-hmm. an older woman that gives perspective. They don't have it. Mm. So when you, I tell my, I say to my children, especially one of my sons. Oh my God, this boy was 19 year old. Oh. Give me his 19 year old friend's advice. I said that's. <laughs> Baby spread poo poo. How did you know at 19? <laughs> That's your, you all playing with poo poo. No, you need a grown man with perspective to say, put that down, wash your hands, and let's go play in the mud. It's clean. It's clean. That's why anybody that's in my space will mm-hmm. have a perspective. Let's not look at what they say and let's watch their evolution. It comes, you know, I made a post the other day on Facebook and because it was just like it's just amazing. It's not even just a post. I did that and I said something in my stream yard thing about how women don't support other women, like the fact that we're doing the sisters and music thing, and some of the other organizations just haven't had said, you know, congratulations. That's all. They don't even have to partner with us. And then so they're an organization that's supposed to be supportive of women, and they don't even do that. I have a huge but problem. But why don't they, Natalie? You know the answer now. Okay, well that's the village. <laughs> they, and they've never been taught. That's another thing I do. I'm a life coach. How would you expect a person to congratulate you when they've never been congratulated in their own life? That's not in their lexicon. They, that's not in their reservoir of knowledge. We are so hard on people who don't know. One of the things I do in artist development, I sit down with a full table and teach you how to have table manners. Not that you need to do it, but you just need to understand. Because when you go out with the CEO of a major record label, you need to at least feel comfortable that you know what to do, even if everybody's doing it wrong. Hmm. Why is so it Natasha? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, and the I people like me, people like me, and it's not like I'm different than anybody else. I'm so freaking busy. I don't always have time to talk to people. So when I do have time, I try to drop a, drop a, drop a, drop a, drop a knowledge. I know. I know. Listen, I know. Because you've given it to me. <laughs> but do you understand? So it's no, not I- that they haven't reached out. They don't know to reach out. Mm. So what you should be doing is sit in the seat of teacher. I'm so glad you're here and set the pace before me, and maybe we'll have an opportunity to work together. I'm so happy that you are here. You should be doing the congratulations. When you don't have a village, you know how you know what to do. I always tell people when they say, what is my purpose? What itches? If it itches and nobody said congratulations, that means maybe you should be doing it. Everything they itch is what you're called to do. It don't itch them because they're not called to do it. Natalie, why do you think I've been attracted to watching your career? You're absolutely brilliant. You hunt like a major hunter. You got drive more than me, and I think I got some drive. Me have more than drive than you. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know I about that. Drive, but I don't think my drive will touch your drive. Because, girl, I'm going to bed at 730, so you'll still be up. <laughs> Well, on, on, that note, on that note, that is so true because I'm up to 11. Crap. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of work, but you know what? I have to give you credit because you're, you've are you actually given me a lot of, you know, ideas, especially with the Sisters in Music thing and incorporating men and all that stuff and some different ideas. I, I you know, if I didn't have you in my life, I... I'd be nowhere without you. So and I, guess I really what? When, and that, and your article for Sisters in Music, I already did Nikki's, but your article is going to be coming out. I'm going to be sending it to you to read it. It's going to attract a lot of people to you. Get ready. Oh, I'm listening. I'm ready. I'm ready and willing. <laughs> I'm, I'm shaking it right now. Um. So, so let, me, let me get to, let me get another perspective from you. So okay. 
What do you think about this whole controversy in the music industry, in the country, country music industry? You know, for and there's been a couple of black people in there, two or three. Right. Um, and so now, because of this thing that happened with uh, this young man and the use of the N-word and stuff like that, and now, you know, the doors want to be open for black people in the, in the music industry, which should have been for the longest time. You know, I, I've seen people been added. They did a whole um, black history country music playlist. That's beautiful. But the thing is, it shouldn't take an incident for that to have occurred. And it's not only... Not only should uh, a black country artists be on the black history uh, playlist, but they should be on every other playlist. It shouldn't stop at there. So what do you think about the whole, you know, the black trying to get into the country scene? And, you know, it's music. Music should be a place where there shouldn't be any negativity. So I never understand this at all. Think about it. Mm. When has change come? When enough is enough? Exactly. So when did we have the civil rights? Rosa Parks got tired of sitting in the back, and she was ready. And enough is enough. And when people went across the bridge and the police went at them, when enough is enough. So it, he had to be the tipping point. I suggest that all people in music, if you have not read Malcolm Gladwell, Tipping Point, read it. Right. Life comes and happens when it's supposed to happen. It's not why it happened. It means it's time to ha- it happen. Mm. True. So when you spend all your time working on the why, you're missing on what you should do to gain your leverage because of it. You won't care why. It's just time. Because like Melvin always says, enough is enough when it's enough. That's so true. So true. Um. So tell me, how and why did you get into um, the coaching aspect of things of life? It kind of fell. It's like, okay, so you know I'm an IT specialist, and I held yeah. that back for a long time. A lot of people don't know it. And I do IT consulting and all of that kind of work, and I teach information technology courses and all that kind of work. And so I wanted to do something to help the community. And so I established Jeremiah's Call to get a platform for young men interested in getting a rap. That was called My Way to Help. Well, in doing that, I took them through a series of boot camp and training. Okay. And I met somebody with a major artist on a major label, and she liked the way I trained them. And she wanted me to train her artists. Mm. So I started training, training her artists who traveled the world with a major group, and he learned so much from me. And then from him, he told people who told people, and then my, then my daughter was like, Mommy, go get certified. <laughs> you're, you're coaching all these people. And I did, <laughs> so now I'm at the point I don't take any new new. I have three active clients, and, and I, no more new new because it's hard work. Oh, yeah. Wow. Right. So that's how it kind of evolved and people came to me. I never advertise. No. And I, I do more turning away than taking on. I got three active right now. And that's if yeah. one drops out, I might take on another. Yeah, because it's hard work. At one time I had five and I've never had anybody that lives in the same state as I do. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Before now, the Bible. Now tell me this. How hard is music management. It's Managing. real hard. It's hard because you're different than most, but most artists are very ungrateful. <laughs> so they don't understand. For me to get you a gig, I might have to call seven people, 70 people, right. and get you one gig. And then when I get you the gig, you mad because it ain't crowded because you didn't promote. Mm-hmm. And somebody's got to set up the photo shoots and get the and mm-hmm. and get and get you out there get promotion done and and a whole bunch of stuff for it never to be enough. Mm-hmm. And so it's and I and not just for me. I talk to other managers all around, and that's it's just an ungrateful business. You do all the work, and then when they get up there, they they thank God and a sister. Not the person who put all of the effort to get them on a stage. Yeah. No, I, I see that. I see that. It's funny because 
uh, the other lady that I interviewed, she's a she's a music uh, and, and manager of, of publishing, uh, Kiki Finley, and she said the same thing. She used to do the manage people. She said she can't do that anymore. She said it's like you you're dealing with a baby, or or you have to go after them and and try to get the information in, from them, and you're the one that's trying to help them get their career, and then they're taking their time trying to get the info uh, to you. She said it just didn't make right. any sense. She said she wasted her time right. doing it. She said, she goes, that's why I love you. She said, as soon as I asked you for the information, you were like, boom, here it is. And right. then I said, because you don't have time to play. I said, I'm serious about my craft. I'm serious about getting my music out there. So I don't have time to waste. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to have a job here, do a job, then do music, then do Sisters in Music. But you know to- the difference between, but you know the difference between you and other people. You tell me what the difference is. Because I tried to write it in your article, but I don't know if you got it. What's the difference between you and other people? I think, well, I don't know. I think I have a lot of drive. Um, yes. And what I else? Think I, I think I have more drive. I think I also, I care. And I, 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 yes. I also think because I also promote other people as well. Um, uh, but you know what else? The main thing, most people who are immature about it try to get into the music business. You get into the business of music. Right. True. And psychologically, and I and I purposely write it like that, and some people always try to change that around. Big difference. You mm-hmm. understand the business of music. Yeah. They want to be in the front row. They want to bring in 50 people for free. They want to see their name in the skylight, right. but they don't want to be in the business of music. No, I have to agree with you. That That is very important. You need to learn every aspect of the music biz. Um, yes. So that you're not taken advantage of. You know what you're doing. I mean, because some people right. will... Some people do, uh, you know, they do contact me through mess- messenger and they say, can you, they'll throw things in my messenger, which I hate, so I don't pay attention to that. But the people that say hi or whatever, and then they, they're like, can you promote my music, this, that, and the other? And I'm like, well, what are you looking for? I mean, they don't even know. I said, you need to have a plan. I can't just take your music, promote it for you, and just go off the cuff. It just doesn't work that way. And then I find that a lot of people are just lazy. Like but some people. Still- I really, I've learned, Natalie, they don't know <laughs> the business of music. When mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you, this is the honest to God truth. Years ago, I already had an undergrad in business, and then I got an MBA. And then when I got my MBA, I was like, man, that what, what a waste. But what mm-hmm. people don't understand about business is amazing to me. And what I've learned through academics and training, most people don't know. So when you got an MBA in your corner and you trying to tell them why they not marking you right, mm-hmm. and you can't even read analytics and she can freaking program it, what are you talking about? Right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Um, so when you got somebody trained to understand the law of diminishing return, they don't even know what that means. That's critical when you're out there promoting yourself. True. That's a critical basic economic principle that when you got too much, you get less return. But then they want to put too much and wonder why it's not returning. Right. That's just one of hundreds of principles. That's so true. You know, I tell up and coming artists, you know, especially the ones that are in school that, you know, they want to come out here, they want to be. I'm famous. It's like you need to take. You should get a minor in music music business. It's so right. critical, especially these right. days. Because you know when you're coming out there, you're pretty green about the whole music industry. You know, people fall prey to that. People will come and right. scam artists all the time. I've had people try to do that on several occasions. So one person tried to bilk me out of four thousand dollars, but I call their right. bluff. Because I went back to them, right. so, okay, well, I'm going to have to do this to get the money. And then I never heard from them again. And it's just like people need to do their due diligence. And it's not even just about music. It's just in life. Do your due li- right. diligence. Whoever you're working with, do do your research to see what they've done, where they are, and get, get you know, some references to say, yeah, this person right. helped me on that and the other. Because too many people fall prey to, to the scams out there. 
Now, right. and the and the one certain artist and say, well, he made millions, but and the, but he has sponsors giving him hundreds of thousands of dollars. Do you have that? They don't Thank understand you. that. Thank you. Yeah, sponsorship is great. Yeah, they, a lot of people don't understand the independent life. It is a lot, a lot of work. Like, especially if you're a one woman or one man show, like Natalie, um, and you're having to post on social media, different platforms, you got to try to get fans, you're listening to this, you want your your music in film, you're listening to licensing, music supervisors, this, that, and the other, you have to build, you know, spreadsheets, and then, and then, and then you have the day job, and then you have the night job, and then you have all this other stuff, and you're like, well, there's not enough hours in the day for me to get all this done, I'm going to get it done, because you have to organize yourself, but it's a lot of work, and I just find that a lot of people just don't want to put in the effort. They just want things to come easy to them. It's, and I'm sorry, with music, it just doesn't happen that way. It just right. doesn't happen that way at all. Um, That's right. Well, yeah, That's so let's segue into your writing. So you're also an author, right. but but you write, um, what's your put Celebrity. I like that celebrity thing that you're doing. So oh. let's talk about your writing. Well, I have 11 books that I have written oh. and published. And so, and then um, people have asked me in the past what I write for their magazines. Then, it, then I started writing for Coretta Doc. Then I've been writing for um, Reggie and Urban Sentinel magazine. And then one day, Coretta had a vision. She said, you know that picture that you have? And she drew it like a sick person. I need you to write all oh, this celebrity because that's not something I would do for myself. I was like, okay. I sent it to my graphics guy and did it because I've done some celebrity interviews like I did. Brian McKnight, right. uh, Jody Watley. And, yeah, and so by doing their interviews, and Will Downing, it was so much fun. And um, by doing those interviews and others, that's really helped with regard to doing celebrities. And I know not to take too much of their time and do my research before I go and all that stuff. Now, because of COVID, I know I know you recently did. Didn't you just recently do Brian McKnight's and uh, Jody Watley's? I, yeah, I did Jody Watley is a while ago. We were just waiting for her birthday to publish it. Okay. And yeah, so the order is not necessarily representative of when the magazine came out. Yeah. But she was really fun, really cool. I did all of my research. So I was like, I don't need to talk about your past. Let's talk about now. I know your past. Let me tell you about your past. You know, same with Brian and I. I know about your past. Let's talk about where you are now. You know, and so they were <laughs> the vantage point with me. I know music, so I could talk about them as a person because they know their music, but they want people to know them as a person too. Yeah, I know Brian McKnight came. Was it him? It was him. I know he had a little something something happen last year. I think with his daughter. Was it well, his daughter? Son. Yeah, but it was just like normal family stuff yeah, that people no put, on, put online. Yeah. No different than me yeah. and my four kids, please, girl. <laughs> that was so sad when I thought the man can sing, too. But for his interview, uh-huh. did you do it virtually? I do it all on the phone. I do them okay. on the phone. Just like how we're talking in that. I prefer not to be on Zoom. Okay. I prefer just to be on the phone, and they all right with that too. So I always do mine on the phone. All right, because well, that, then you that's... can write. You don't have to stare at somebody. You can really write. You can ask questions, good questions, and keep the flow going. And you know, and I like to write in color and bring some instances like in his. You know, he was pulling up to buy his morning coffee and stuff, and I wrote that into the interview so you could feel like he was in a car with him, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, you are an awesome writer, that's for sure. I mean, it's just... Thank um, you. <laughs> Nikki was just like, damn, she can write. <laughs> I said, yeah, she's a professional. Oh, yeah, Nikki like her story? I can't yeah. wait till people see it. <laughs> she's I like... I oh, wait till I said, yeah, that's I can't wait. I was like, that's from Natasha Riesberg. She does nothing but good. It's like the best work ever. And I said, uh, I said I'm so blessed to to know her because she's just been a a light in my life. You know, she reached out and 
from there, it's just been great. And I'm so appreciative of everything that you've done for Girl, me. Girl, I've only just begun. My life oh. is about helping people that appreciate it. Trust me when I tell you, wait till the COVID lets me go. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> the COVID has me now, but wait till it lets me go. You appreciate the help, and honey, I'm going to be there. No, I do. I, I plan to be there. I I'm going to be on the window banging. Can I come in? <laughs> now, how did you get into the whole IT thing? I've been doing IT all my life. So I majored in information. No, I majored in business and monitored in information technology back right. in the Stone Age. And mm-hmm. when I was went to the federal government, I did information technology projects. All my projects were information technology and mm-hmm. as a contract specialist and a contracting officer. So after about 11 years of that, I said, hey, I want to go to the other side. So I went to the other side to become a project manager. And my first big project was managing the data center. It was 250 people, and my contract was that. And so I was good, and I, then I became the person over the budget, the IT budget for the agency, the tire budget, all of the, for all of the peripherals, hardware, software, and everything. And then my manager, my boss said, you want to go back to school? I was like, sure. So I went back and got a master's in information systems at Johns Hopkins. Um, and it was good that I went back because even though I worked in it, I didn't really know all the theories good. So right. that was a good thing. Yeah, so I was doing it, but I didn't know why. So I, I learned all the whys at that time. And so for a long time, thanks to Coretta Doctor, I didn't even share with people that I was working for the government, plus teaching at UMBC and doing mm-hmm. all this stuff in information technology. She was like, you need to put that in your resume. I'm like, it makes me like a geek. <laughs> it's okay. Geeks are cute. Geeks are hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell people that. I didn't, know, well, I didn't want people to know I was so geeky because now I consult for two different companies, information mm. technology, but I like doing it. I like infrastructure. I like flow, system flow and design. I like that. So how do you balance everything that you do? I'm going to get at 7.30 and get up at 4 because that's what I, the key is my, my sleep. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. You just said the wrong four. Get up at four. But at four, I'm bright. Four a.m. Uh, I'm like ready to party. Where's the hot tea at? Let's go. Yeah. And that's how I balance it all. And one of the things, because I do teach in the Department of Information System, it keeps me fresh with regard to the new technologies, the evolving views of the technology. To keep you fresh. <laughs> no, you uh-uh. and you cook four, and don't call me at four o'clock in the morning. Be like, now. Oh no, I don't. I don't fool with anybody. No, but some people that are morning people will text me to see if I'm up. Because you know what I do, Natalie. I do it because of the music. People don't go to sleep. I turn my phone off every night. <laughs> And so if my phone is not on, I don't mm-hmm. care. What if it's an emergency? It's got to wait until I wake up. There you go. I like that. I like that because a lot of people are so stuck to their phones. No, nope, I'm not. Stuck. I'm not either. And you know one thing? <laughs> and you know one thing with me, especially smartphones, they're just another piece of technology, and I'm really sick of it because I had high-end technology before people heard of technology. I mean, I used to bring home a mini computer back in the day before laptops. So I'm to the point I don't like a lot of technology. Right. I, I write. I don't. I write with pen and paper. I don't like a lot, even though I got a real nice Mac setup. I only have like four laptops and one major setup, but. I don't like to carry a lot with me. See, I'm like a, I love gadgets. I don't like to be on, like my phone, I don't have it ring. It's on set on vibrate. I don't like to hear it ring, but obviously I want it to vibrate with new music jobs and stuff like that. But I don't like to hear it ring, but I am a freak when it comes to gadgets. Like I have, what do I have? I have like three iPads. I have the original iPad still. Um, oh, I have, my God. But, I have an iMac. I, 
I love Mac products. I, I started out with PCs and, um, so people think I'm crazy, but when I see some like a gadget, a new gadget, I'm like, oh my God, I got to have that. But what's bad about me is I will buy the gadget. That thing will sit in the box for months before I'm open it. I'm not one like when, once, I, once it gets into the house, I have to open it. I like to savor it and say, and then I'll think to myself, didn't I buy that thing? And it's funny because I was doing some cleaning and I was like, when uh-huh. did I buy And I found some boxes and I'm like, when did I buy this? I was looking for something wow. like this. Yeah, that's how crazy I am. But I like I love technology in the sense of I always think about what made that person think of this idea. So it's right. almost. Um, but you know what, Sage? That goes back to the itch. Right. So because you you have the question of what made that person think of that idea, you're probably the type of person that can monetize off of it because you learn why. Right. I'm the point now, when I get a new piece of technology, because my, all of my children had PCs and stuff before they, I call my son, my son, come in here and load up my stuff. I need to defrag. Can you come defrag for me? I don't even defrag my own stuff anymore. I don't care like that. Right. Right. I used to always do my own dick, girl. No, not anymore. Do I know how? <laughs> yeah. Do I do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I used to partition and put my note. No, I just go get on my laptop if I need to do something. No, no, I, uh, I mean, I'm always, I'm always Googling stuff. How can I do this? That's how I started with the music, whole music thing is that, you know, I didn't even know anything. I was like, okay, let me go on the internet. Let me see where I can put my music. And then I found Tate Music Group was now bankrupt because they lied. And so I ended up leaving them because I, uh, started to do everything myself and it was just me googling and trying to figure out where to get my music and the one thing about me is like when I'm going to do going to do something I really become a thing is what mm-hmm. people need to do because if you're obsessed with them you're constantly going to work at it and try to get to a certain level uh with your career and through that you know entering songwriting contests entering into awards um meeting new people getting into groups um one of the the greatest things I have to say is that you know I, I don't know do you know about clubhouse yeah yeah uh-huh yeah, so, so clubhouse is the new thing and i think that it was just a brilliant thing to invent you know a platform where people just talk i mean celebrities on on it the other day mc hammer started to chat and people were in it. some some things just have too many damn people now he's not going to sit in that group but I've wow. learned so much because there's this one woman called Empress and she's been teaching independence about music supervise, music supervising, licensing and thinking and what you can do and, and all these useful uh, websites that I didn't know about. And I had to ask her if she ever swept because every time I look, she's always on, on, on Clubhouse. Um, but stuff like that I love. Like one of the things that I want to create, and I keep saying this, I just have to find the investor and the money to do it, but... I want to create an app, not an app, a gadget that you can put in the shower because a lot of my song ideas, the greatest ones come in the shower. And and that's for a lot of people. So one of the things you need to understand, it's already invented. So all you got to do is go find somebody and partner with them. I've never seen That's already, that's not new. Yeah. So a lot of the things, what what happens in technology, they can't get a market quick enough and and it moves to the next thing. I have to Google that because I haven't seen anything that's waterproof that you can just, you're in the shower, you hit the button. Trust and you, me when I tell you, you, you know where you go when you're looking for that kind of experimental thing? You go mm-hmm. to the top colleges. You go to Carnegie Mellon. You go to um, Berkeley. You go mm-hmm. to um, what other schools? IT. You look at real high uh, IT school. Oh, MIT. Mm-hmm. And you go to the college students. That's who invest them. Same with Facebook. Same thing. Those those people do that stuff in there. I had a student a couple of years ago, mm. and he was in my uh, one of my classes. I forgot which one, but it was a real technical class. Oh, decision support systems class. And what he did online was simply test all different things. Mm-hmm. People made a company hired him in, Cal- in California to come and do what he did for free for fun at a major mm. salary to do for them. So all you do is go find their club and send them a thing. And I bet you it's somebody that already invented it just didn't know you would like it. Yeah, no, I have that's to how see. Un- that's how deep it is, especially 
MIT? Yeah. I'll have to see because I tried Googling. I don't. I haven't found anybody that's doing it, but I can find somebody that's thought of it. The college I'm... sites. Yeah, mm-hmm. the college sites because innovative. The college sites, not the Google people with big money. Yeah. Yeah, because I have people to with see. little bit of money because they're trying to get to school. I mean, even if somebody tried to invent something like that already, it's not out there. So I could invent. I guess somebody to create it for me and just put it out there. Sure could. Get somebody that, to do it as a project. I'm looking yeah. for somebody to build this for me for your class project. Yeah, no, that's an idea. One of my students in my class right now, they're building a, a smart mirror. A smart mirror. And what would that smart yeah, mirror Yeah, it's going to have weather, the time, and a few of email and stuff. So you just look at it and talk? Yes. Yeah. No. Like a smartphone. No. <laughs> well, you know you can talk to your refrigerator now. Right. And they can redo a mirror. Right. So when you get up in the morning, you go to the mirror. And, I mean, it's not like it's new. It's not highly marketable, but they're building it for my class. So that's why I'm just trying to tell you, like, that kind of stuff, that stuff is not new. It's mm-hmm. just that the, when the industry can't see who would buy it and how much would they pay? That kind of stuff. I'm going to go to the mirror and say, do I look ugly today? Will it answer no, me? No, you don't. The mirror said, no, never. You always look fine, girl, please. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was just, well, today uh, <laughs> I am. <laughs> I would want it to say, today I am. I don't know. You're kind of looking kind of rough there, buddy. But uh, <laughs> this was yourself. <laughs> Now, you know, if I had a mirror that talked back, that would be something. It'd be cool if they had different voices on the mirror, like a sexy I'm, voice. I'm so telling you. Oh, Natalie, you look so lovely. Uh, <laughs> that, well, that's awesome. You know what? I love when people put things out there that are just so amazing. I mean, wow. I love that. Um, yeah, so tell yeah. Me, uh, Tell our audience where they can find you on the internet. If, I mean, are you looking for other talent? I mean, because you, your plate is full. I don't know. I no, I'm look. not looking for talent. I'm talking to the talent I plan to work with. Okay, all right. <laughs> and you look, know, I'm not looking for talent. I'm not looking for anybody else to coach. But I don't mind helping people when they have a question. So that kind of stuff I don't mind. <laughs> or if somebody wants an article, my email. You know my email. Um, is it the CNR production? Yeah, that's no, the one. The C- is that it's, what it is? Because I got so yeah, many. Yeah, it's the C You're asking me. It's C- <laughs> <laughs> it's the C production. <laughs> I'm like, you're asking me. If somebody, would, if somebody would like an article written, I'd like to do that. No one person that would be good. I have to send you uh, my friend Kit, because he's, he's just amazing. And he's oh, just, that would he's, be great. He's just an overall awesome person, and he said, "Oh my God, he's so generous!" And he just charted on Billboard, uh, number one on um, the Hard Rock Billboard charts. Um, and he's oh, so that hungry. would be great! Yeah, and he worked really hard on it. So I'm going to connect you. Um, okay. I'll send you his email, but I'll tell him about you because he's just phenomenal, and he deserves the accolades. He's just too humble about it. Um, but I want to thank and you so and much. Some, and, yeah, no problem. But some of my articles really get people some nice play. So let's yeah, go. I, I know. Don't, you don't have to tell me. I love you for life. <laughs> you, 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 preaching, you preaching to the choir. <laughs> you, you love me. <laughs> I know what you can do. Please. So uh, there's, there's no worries here. There's no worries here. <laughs> But thank you so much, Sasha, for being on Chatting with Nat. I really appreciate everything you've done for me, everything you've done for the world. Hell, you're just, you're, 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 welcome. you're just a great no, we're person. Gonna, we're going to work together because you got hustle. That's hustle with my enthusiasm, girl, please. The sky's the limit. 4 a.m. I know that 4 a.m. thing. You're up and at them, and then you, you wait till around I am. 9, 10 o'clock. Okay, Natalie, <laughs> are you up? Because <laughs> oh, uh, I'm ready to go. But at 7.30, I'm out. 
Um, yeah, no, I really appreciate everything you've done for me and everything that you, you really have done for the world. And, you know, Nikki appreciates you as well. She's, she, she loves you. She said, oh, my God, I love her. Um, yeah, I can't wait to get her article out there because after I get it in one magazine, I'll put it in another and let's go. Yeah, what's not, what's not to love about Natasha Richburg though? And your your pictures are fabulous. Your pictures. Oh, thank are you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like, how did she do that? She's no. I said, my God, this woman is, is just great. She's just great. That's all I, I can love say. It. My 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 photographer Aisha Butler, Dazzy Studios. I did an article on her and her husband. They're a wonderful couple, Jeff and Aisha. Yeah, I stick with the same people. Oh, not this. Oh Lord, the baby took my cord. <laughs> and I do conversation with the Richbergs, and I work with Rod Lopez, and he's got a new studio. Oh, he's got a new studio. So if somebody needs to go to a studio and film something or do a podcast there and have a film, yeah, uh-huh. he's got a nice studio. And he really has a price for the independent, not big fancy price, regular uh-huh. people stuff. I like, those, I like that sound. Yes, yeah, and that's why I wanted to say that, yeah, because, you know, it's no. It's doable I, and it's really good. Oh, I know. I know. You don't have to tell me twice. Um, but thanks again. You know, you and I will chat again. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> you and I will it, chat all the time. Um, yeah. We're going to get things going. <laughs> 2021 is yeah. the year. Yes, yeah. and I'll get out of the house finally. Oof. That's right. That's right. Um, and then, you know, you know, we have to make plans to meet up too. Get together yeah. um, and get things done. Yes. But thank All right, you. girl. But I know you got to get off this line. Thank you so much. And you have a great day, okay? You too. Thank you so much, Natasha. I appreciate it. Love you. All right. Love you too. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Love you. with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard.